Hey guys, this is James here from Forex Alchemist, and I'm sitting down today to bring you an expert guide to the brand new DLC faction in Endless Space, the Vaulters. Um, so I'm going to be going through this video. Um, a sl it'll be slightly different than a lot of the other videos that we've done, because here I won't necessarily be assuming that you guys will already have and have maybe played with the faction before because it's a uh, paid for DLC um, so I'm gonna be going kind of from the bottom up and um, yeah and kind of really going into some of the basics of how they work and how the strategy of the vaulters um, impacts the early game of Endless Space 2. Uh, we're also going to be doing another video that should have come out right before this one on the mechanics and strategy of the vaulters, just kind of like going in a little bit briefer sense without doing a, a gameplay example into what the vaulters are and, and kind of like how they compare to other races in endless space. Um, and so, yeah, I think that with that, we'll just kind of get right into this. It's going to be another expert guide, turns 1 through 30. Um, let's see how it goes. So, yep, I guess standard introduction, 10 players, huge galaxy, endless game and pirates difficulty, normal speed, um, no Vodiani, because I don't know if the AI has gotten better for them. It used to be really broken. So even though the Vodiani are fixed a little bit in terms of um, how their mechanics play, I don't know if the AI has gotten better. Because they used to just leave their arcs undefended, and it was so easy to trash <clears throat> to trash a Vodiani, which is why we don't usually put we never put them in the AIs. Alright, so we have a dumbbell galaxy. And right away, you can tell that um, so Dumbbell Galaxy, and right away you can tell that the Vultures are a little bit different. So, as I said, there's going to be another video that goes into the mechanics more briefly, or more in like a, a more broad way, um, although it'll be a shorter video. But let's just really briefly talk about what's different about the Vultures. Main thing that you can notice right away when you start is you don't start with a planet, you start with a colony ship. Um, I can throw this over to any, so you start around this, uh, this constellation, um, anomaly, I forget what we used to call it, but basically this non, non-planetary node, um, and then you have to run over to a node with planets, uh, to settle down, and it shows you all of the connected nodes when you start, so that you can easily pick which one to go to. and. This is my fifth game with the Vaulters now, and there's always pretty good planets nearby. So here you have Titanium, Jade Onyx, and then a Boreal with, uh, with two unknowns. So right off the bat, and then we'll check the other one as well, it's got Hyperium, so it's a Terran with Hyperium and an unknown. So right off the bat, let's talk about this. So we're going to go, it settles and it creates a colony with three, three people. Um, we're going to do Titanium instead of the Hyperium one because it also has Jade Onyx. So, hoorah. Alright, so here we go. Uh, and so now you've got the Argosi, you colonize it, and we're not going to do the Boreal. The jungle's better because of the industry. Boreals have really low industry, but we'll get the Boreal later. All right, so now we've got our jungle. And let's talk, now Now that we've settled, let's talk about some of the other mechanics really briefly. So when you use the Argosi to settle a new system, first of all, it doesn't go into an outpost mode. It just becomes a colony immediately. Uh, and it starts this thing called a golden age. That golden age lasts for a variable number of turns. Here we've got seven. And it gives a huge boost, so manpower, and all FIDs, 25, uh, 15 approval on this system, 10 approval on all systems, and 5 influence. The conversion rate doesn't really matter. So this is a, an absolutely unbelievably strong buff, right? Like I'm settling and my science here 
is immediately 37. 50 dust, 75 industry on turn one. Just think think about, like, unbelievable. <coughs> Unbelievably strong. Um, on top of that, it creates a scout ship when you settle your first time. We'll get to that more in a second. Um, okay, other things to go into. Do, do, do. So, Empire Traits, and we'll talk about the portals a bit later. We'll also talk about material expertise using Titanium and Hyperium and the other strategics to upgrade our systems a bit later. And the Corsair is not so important. Okay. So then let's, let's talk about the other things. So, from a broad sense, one of the cool things about the Vaulters is that they're designed to be a tall faction. And what I mean when I say tall is that in 4X games you can either go wide or go tall. Going wide means you make lots of little colonies in um, as many systems or as many locations as you can. Little cities, colonies, outposts, whatever, depending on the game. And then once you seed all of those little things, you keep trying to stretch out into more and more territory, and then it grows grows up uh, kind of from the inside out, and that's that's your snowball, right? You go out, your core gets bigger and stronger, and because you've claimed all of this territory in the early game, as all of your outlying territories grow up too, you become stronger than the other empires. The vaulters are intentionally trying to subvert that way of playing. So um, my favorite race in Endless Space is the Lumeris. They are the prototypical wide uh, faction because they don't even have to build colony ships. They can just throw outposts all over the place. And as they throw outposts around, then once those things mature, then, then they can start growing. But they're growing very little until that point. Um, the Vaulters don't even have colony ships. They only have the Argosi. But the Argosi automatically regenerates every four turns, and then there's like a cooldown period before you can create a new colony, which we'll talk about in a sec. Um, but it doesn't have outposts. It never drains from the previous early cities, and in, in fact gives them this huge boost at the beginning with this Golden Age mechanic. So you're your first systems grow like crazy, um, and they can produce like crazy as well. So, so the way that the Vaulters play out is quite different from a lot of the other races um, in Endless Space, in, I think, a very interesting way. Now, we'll talk about it a bit later, uh, but, but this is really overtuned right now. This, this bonus is way too good, um, but, but we'll see how it goes, and hopefully you, I'll let you guys reach your own conclusions by the end of this video. But just for now, uh, as we start playing, remember that we are... Uh, here it is turn one, and we have a jungle with Jade Onyx that we're already getting, which, by the way, is kind of one of the nice things about being able to choose the planet that you settle on, is that it can have strategic and luxury resources on it, which has previously only been a, a facet of the Riftborn and the Vodiani. Uh, and we're producing 60 food and 74 industry. So this is like, you know we're gaining uh, our next population already in five turns. That's like unfallen levels of, uh, of population growth. So, keeping that in mind, uh, we're going to immediately jump into colonizing this boreal because we want our cold and fertiles as early as possible. Um, oh, Cerebral Reality in three turns. <clears throat> I might take that first instead. I might take that first. From a research perspective, we start with extra colonization options. So we've got both tier one uh, colonizations for tundra and Mediterranean. But the most valuable things for us early are like we have we are pulling double duty on getting xenolinguistics because we've got two fertiles in our home system. So. And, and titanium on our home planet. So getting xenolinguistics is the obvious first choice, and because our science is so damn high early on, 
we get xenolinguistics in three turns. Compare that to, for example, the Lumeris, who take seven turns to get it at, uh, to get xenolinguistics at the beginning. All right. Next, let's look at curiosities. So we've got two there that we can go after, and two on our home planet. So that's probably good enough to uh, justify bringing Petrov down. With so with Petrov, let's talk about her really quick. So she's an overseer scientist, or sorry, an overseer vaulter, as her two things. And as overseer, <coughs> the most so she's she's definitely better off as a governor than a general. Um, and as overseer, she has this ability: farming logistics, which give plus ten food per fertile and overall on the system. And then it goes up to I think fifteen at level two, might even be twenty, um, but I think it's fifteen. And and this is a crazy food bonus. I think it is 20, actually. Hmm. Um, this is an absolutely crazy food bonus that can just propel your population forward so fast. Because remember, you never have to feed your outposts. So all of the food that you gain in the early on just goes to build your population really fast. And then her second interesting governor ability <clears throat> is giving extra um, strategic resources, although it's not too much. And she also can pump the... Uh, the strategic resources that she gives in um, her second tier. So we want to get her up to this ability, farming logistics, as quickly as possible. And there really is a, a justified question of like whether we put her in the uh, in the system, which is making so much industry. Like that can be a really fair thing to do. Um, especially in the early part of the game, or we throw her in a in a ship to to secure curiosities. So right here, because we have four curiosities, which is a decent number, but not a huge number that we can see right now. Um, and by the way, I want to make this decision before using these probes because we'll want to put her in the fleet so that she gains experience. There's one other factor. <coughs> excuse me, I'm a little sick today. That I'm going to look at before making this decision. And that's here in the second tier of the science tree. Um, we have a different quest every time. Sometimes it's be the first to explore 10 curiosities and get a really big bonus. <coughs> and when that's the case, <coughs> then it's often better to make sure that she's flying around helping you get curiosities early. But given that this is this explore 50% of the galaxy thing, which will take forever in this huge galaxy, it's not that important. So I'm going to take a slightly different approach uh, than I have done in the past. And you, because I would say 75% of the time, I will make her a uh, make her an admiral. But this time, I'm not going to do it. We're going to, for the reasons that we just talked about, throw her as a governor first. And then hopefully she'll be pulling in some uh, some experience from this early. Yeah, from the f the first couple of uh, of early constructions, because she doesn't need that much XP to level up, only twenty five. And uh, and we'll see how this goes. This is one of those things I haven't played around with it too much. The default, if you're thinking about what, what to do as a default, would be to throw her into a ship. Um, this is just one of those things that, because we're making so much industry, I'm really curious to see if it will work out. Because the main power spike that she gets, and that she'll give to the, uh, to the system, comes as soon as she hits level 2. So to evaluate this choice, just to kind of let you guys think through, through the way I'm, I'm thinking of this, of whether it was a good or bad one, because it would normally take eight turns of her flying around before she could be reassigned, then we're doing well here if before turn eight, she's level two hanging around in the system, right? If by turn five or six, she's level two, I think then we've made a, a decent choice. If it takes until turn eight, we made the wrong choice. So with that, 
let's go ahead and... Oh, there are three here. I didn't see that one. That might have changed my calculus a little bit. So we've got some influence in deserted cities, more jade onyx, and more titanium. Wow. And it's an average deposit of titanium as opposed to this weak deposit over here. Okay. Um, does this change things for us? I think yes, it does. Titanium is the lifeblood of the vaulters. Having two on our home planet is unbelievably good. Um, yeah, so we are... No, we're going to keep it. We're going to keep it like it is. Getting that extra 15 science is going to be important for us. So we will wait. And then uh, he's going to run over this way to the in-between node there and see what's up. I know this is a super long turn one, but we're just trying to go into all of the key mechanics. The other thing to mention is we start governmentally as a federation. So... Um, yeah, it's kind of like a, a generic middle-of-the-road government, and most importantly, we start as scientists. So scientists were recently changed to buff the Sophons, and they have far and away become the strongest of all of the, uh, the, the starting political um, factions. The reason for that is this guy. So the Dirty Hands Act gives a 20% boost to uh, reduction on system improvement industry costs uh, for just one influence per person. And we're gaining, as you can see, 15 influence per turn already. So it's almost no penalty for us to get a 20% cost reduction on all of our system improvements, like the Cerebral Reality, which by the way, we're now finishing in two turns, right? That is insane insane it doesn't apply to the the colonization because you can see that's a planetary colonization and that's a system improvement but it does apply to things like public privates and drone networks and uh, the xeno industrials that we're going to build so yeah it's uh it's a pretty big deal Something that you guys might be thinking about is, hey, how come you're not? How come you're going to prioritize the colony over, for example, public privates or the drone network? Um, and the reason for that is that the biggest boost in power in the early game right now will come from the Xeno Industrial plants. And I want to finish the Xeno Industrial to get the plus forty industry from having both the boreal and the jungle before my golden age runs out or let's say as soon, as close as possible to before the Golden Age runs out. And and so that's why I'm prioritizing those things. So the Cerebral Reality is just like uh, a nice bonus to science that will get a little bit going, uh, give us a little bit going forward. Um, because we have three turns, speaking of our tact, we have three turns before we unlock Xenolinguistics. And Yep, and so that's going to kind of give us a little bit of a boost um, to science and dust first, then we'll be closely following on the heels with the colonization and xeno-industrials. Okay, so with all of that discussed, um, yeah, I think that's good for now. Oh, there's now a clock on my turn timer. That's weird. Oh, there's four here. Oh, we made the wrong call, guys. Definitely made the wrong call. We really would have liked to have um, have her. She would already be pretty high level at this stage. Okay. It's probably best to make her an admiral. Blue caps as well. Interesting. Okay. Um, Turn two, let's take a brief moment to look at our ships. So the Argosi that um, we're regenerating right now, our, our regenerating colony, super colony ship, um, 
has just three modules and its default is correct here, you want to just give it the maximum amount of speed possible so that it can race from one uh, one system to another as you regenerate or as you uh, expand your empire. The fairing, the scout ship. This is really something we should talk about. So let's uh, let's make a new one just to take a look and uh, talk a briefly about, okay, so for civilian class ships, one of the most powerful and flexible ones in the early game uh, has been what we used to think of as the, uh, the Horatio ship that had four anything goes slots, at least back in the day, so that you could put an engine and three probe modules on it. This guy has the same ability. It's got and it's even better, right? So, so it's got f up to four support modules, but then it's also got up to two attack modules and, and a defense module. So you can make uh, a ship that is equivalent to or stronger than most early stage attacker and defender ships, the, the one CP attacker and defender ships, or you can make the best, the single best probe ship uh, available in the game, both from this shell. So this is the strongest civilian ship in the game, uh, and we should keep that in mind because we're going to try to use it. So like the default here is they gave us, um, you know, this baby engine, which we, we're going to want to improve, um, and a gun there and a defensive thing here, so we're going to throw in this thing, it's not so expensive to activate, and this will be a seven movement ship with six probes. Which we're gonna... Hmm. Again... Yeah... I almost wonder if I should reload. <laughs> because I made two big mistakes here, thinking about this. Right? I guess we'll play it out. But, but I want you guys to know that like I'm making a couple of mistakes here. Again, I've taken a break from the game for a long time. And I'm trying out some new things in this, uh, this expert guide. But let's just talk openly about the mistakes that I made here and how when you guys play your games, you could do better. And, you know, sure, it's only going to be a turn or two difference. But, um, but still, the first, the first one was probably should put our friend uh, Petrov in the... Uh, in the ship. We'll see how that goes. Secondly, I should have gotten the... Th because I, I didn't notice that there were three... Um, three curiosities in ESO. I should have done three curiosities, refitted the ship, and then sent it out. But I didn't do that. But I should have, and now it's going to take me extra time because I have to run back to ESO, refit, and then run back out again. So, a few turns wasted there, I'm afraid. But, so be it. Um, alright, let's check this thing out. So, we already finished our Cerebral Reality. That got us, yeah, about a third, yeah, 10 XP for Petrov there. We have Iso in two turns. Which I think sounds fine. Xenolinguistics in one. And then when we talk about what we should be doing next after Xenolinguistics, um, my view on this is that Galactic Commodities is the most interesting because the Vaulters get an enormous boost from having their first system development. An enormous boost. Um, and we're sitting on both Jade Onyx and a nice Titanium source. So that's probably where I'm going to go next. Although grabbing interplanetary transport ne networks is another fantastic option. Hmm. Especially, so normally I would go for the market right away. But given that we have two Titanium on our home place, and then in our second colony we have... Um, a Hyperium here as well. I think that going for the Hyperium 
next and getting uh, this interplanetary transport network might actually be the right call. So we're going to go for that. So we finished our xenolinguistics. We're going to get Hyperium. We've got two probes here, and we're just going to throw them out towards the uh, center of the galaxy there. Then we're going to upgrade our guy. Now he's got six new probes. Let's see. All right. And we're going to throw one more out, kind of in a random direction that way. and then we're going to go here. Cool. I threw one out so that he'll regenerate the one next turn. So, she's got a little bit more XP from just sitting around, the 12 there. Um, so then, in so we could do, yeah, so putting the Xeno Industrial in the front or behind doesn't matter, so we clearly put it in front. Gain a population in two turns. So let's uh, go for it. We'll be colonized, a second colony by, or second planet by turn five. This is the start of our quest. We can either build defensive or ship improvements, or uh, yeah, or go with the scientist one and build scientific improvements or wonders. It's turn five, and our Argosi is already prepped to uh, go out again. So, let's make a decision on our quest in a second. For now, let's just... More Jade Onyx, and a Garden of Eden over on that savanna. This is going to be a nice place too. How about that? Okay. Um, and then we'll just throw one that way. Because there's only two... Uh, Yep, two over here. So we'll just regenerate another one next turn. Now, the Argosi is back. The issue is that it takes Hyperium and Titanium, as well as Dust, in order to settle. So we need to secure some... Ooh, this is something we didn't talk about. So we need to secure some Hyperium in order to pay for the settlement. And one of the best ways to do that, oh wow, we can make it all the way here in one turn. One of the best ways to do that would be to uh, scout out some Hyperium. The second way to do it would be to buy some on the market. Uh, and that's one more reason why we're going to want to do galactic commodities next. So that we can use some of our cash to secure this on the market. But waiting a couple turns here actually isn't the end of the world because each turn the length of the golden age goes up and the cost of colonization goes down to a minimum of zero at, uh, at zero turns. But in general, even though we're going tall, as I said, because there are, because getting a fully fledged colony this early is so rare and powerful, um, especially in the early game when the costs are cheap, you guys should definitely be trying to pay for colonization at whatever price you can afford. So, let's think for a second. So I've got four turns. This might be a good, good use of the, the discussion of tact. So I've got four turns until my Xeno Industrials, and that's the earliest I would ever be building um, the plasma metallurgy building, the interplanetary transport network. Um, nope, ah, damn, it's four turns either way. All right, well, I guess it's not a good discussion of tact. But since we started it, let's just discuss the, the thought process behind this. So the idea here is that because 
I would be able to use the marketplace to get Hyperium immediately after getting Galactic Commodities, even though Plasma Metallurgy is very close, because I won't be building this building and I won't be harvesting Hyperium for at least three turns, four turns, um, you know, until I until I create that colony, then whether I get this uh, research now or in the future makes zero difference. So actually, hold on. We should still do it. I'll, I'll explain why in a second. Because right now, this completing this has no value. Completing this has substantial value. This is the main thing locking our progress to the next stage of our empire's growth. And so even though it says it'll be done in four turns, small growths in a small growth in our science or like extra an extra push might reduce that to three turns um, and we could we could save ourselves a little bit of time and energy and in fact that was because yeah our science was slightly higher because we were at the boreal where we don't want to be instead of at our jungle where we do want to be so it does make sense so then in four turns we'll get galactic commodities and then fifth turn afterwards we'll get our plasma metallurgy right after we settle Kyrus. So that's just, yeah, like a little discussion of tact, um, which I think is, is one of the most important concepts in playing these games. Okay, now back to our new qu our quest. So scientific buildings are pretty tough to get. Uh, we need to build four, right? And the obvious one is the one that we're going to build in all of our places is the uh, the public privates. So we need to build four public privates or some other science buildings. And the ones that are there in tier two, the only one is magnetic field generators, which is only good if you have anomalies. And then once then the really good ones are once we get down to tier three, right? Research cities. Um, Moon base alpha, which we don't really have right now. That's for later. And uh, this one, the other uh, really good one, graviton shielded laboratories. Um, so, yeah, so that means that we're probably going to be building four public privates. Will we be doing that? Do we have four places where we'll build them? And the answer, I think, is yes, because here we've got three good systems. We're going to want to colonize all of them. Um, and I don't want to spend my time building military buildings because they're just not that good early on. So I am going to take the... Yeah. I am going to take the Seeker ones. should also be noted, though, that this Red Sang bonus versus the 75 Titanium bonus, the Titanium bonus is way better. Way better. Hmm. Almost enough to make me think about doing something different. 280, 160 for the data shipyards. Yeah, I don't think that we just want to, we don't want to waste our time for the quest though. And that 75 titanium, we're going to be making plenty because I'm willing to bet that there's some titanium hidden in Kyrus as well. So, again, long thought, simple decision, scientist. We also don't want to go to a militarist political political setup, so we want to pump our our scientists whenever possible. Okay, done with that turn. I think we'll try to pick up the piece, pace a little bit here. Oh, great! So we found the Tikkanins over here. We'll contact them. We don't have off-world agribusiness, which we should have soon. So let's throw that there. Let's see how fast we're growing. So we didn't get much off of Petra's, off of finishing the colonization there. Three more turns. Yeah, but she will probably level up in two, I guess. Yeah, I think definitely not worth is the answer here. She does not level up fast enough to uh, justify that decision to put her as a uh, governor right away. Let's see what we got. Kessler Syndrome. Oh, that's a terrible planet. And more Jade Onyx. All right. Well, so we have so much Jade Onyx. We're probably going to use that as our upgrade, which is too bad because I wanted to show off the Titanium uh, 
upgrade system, but we'll do that later. All right, so 695 in three turns, we'll be able to do this easily. Our bold experiment here is regaining more probes next turn. We don't particularly need the the T cannons. Oh, hey. This is a vine ship. We've got a bunch of hot planets there. Ashes, lavas, gas. And then this is the end of the uh, constellation over here. So we're a little trapped in. That means that we kind of want to head over here and uh, disrupt our friends, the Unfallen. Just chase them away a little bit. Because especially now that the Unfallen have been nerfed and instead of 20 turn or instead of 10 turns for a vine ship to get your first uh, your first node it's now 20 unmolested turns so just chasing away the vine ship it puts the unfallen so far back it puts them in an almost unrecoverable state all right so we leveled up we are I guess one turn ahead hooray we're gonna go with our bonus to fertile and it does go up to 20. So that gives us plus 30 food on our home plant on our home system which is fun. Now we're just growing just super fast and then even though our golden age is over we've now supplemented it with you know our xeno industrials this food bonus and we're continuing basically at pace uh, of, of when we had the golden age before. The Golden Age duration is now maxed out at 15, so we're a little bit behind where I would like to be. We should have planned slightly better um, in terms of uh, in terms of the uh, the Hyperium that we need. I think we could have probably saved. Eh, one turn, maybe two turns, by jumping directly for marketplaces, which we considered doing. Okay, here we go. Now, let's see what we've got here. Probably should have run, attacked it first. A little extra science. Metallic water is an influence. And a population. I like all of that. So then we're going to attack this fine ship, get up nice and close because we are short range. We killed it. He tried to fight with no he didn't run. The unfallen watch you, unsure if your actions will force or ruin the harmony you see. Okay, so he insists that we stop attacking his fleets. Well, I don't know, I'm not too scared of him now. But I'm fine not attacking him for 10 turns. It balances off the militarist bump that we just had with a pacifist bump. And his vine ship is dead on turn 8, so he's fucked. All right, we finished our commodities exchange this turn, and we got a nice little boost from that science curiosity. So we're a turn ahead of schedule. All righty. This means that on the marketplace, we are going to buy... Let's check how much we need. I think it's going to be eight, seven. Oh, only six Hyperium. Okay. So we're going to purchase six Hyperium for 200 dust and then we even have the dust to just settle this guy right now so here we go jump down on our little Terran planet here and uh, 
start building the two important things right away, our Xeno Industrial and our Public Privates. These ice guys, this isn't going to be a great system, but you know, it'll be fine. And is, yeah, cer certainly suitable for the stage. And we have a little atoll over here with the snow steps. This is going to be a much better spot to go to. And then, yeah, we'll finish that guy in one. Is our science really only 68? I don't believe that. Because I think that it should be 68. Oh, no, I guess it's only 68. Oh, because we jumped down post Golden Age. Right. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Okay. So then, let's finish exploring here. Oh, nothing. Um, and we're going to throw one down to see if it in is indeed the Unfallen Homeworld over there. Meanwhile, we'll come around to home base. And note that we're still getting this enormous boost out of nice, enormous boost out of our scientist law. Right? Dirty Hands Act still giving us minus twenty percent cost to all of our systems. We now have four people here. We're about to have five next turn, six the turn after that. So six times four is another twenty-four out of the interplanetary uh transport network. Yeah. I'm happily going to take some of that. And this is where the experience for Petra will really start racking up a little bit. Um, it would have been even better if we had gotten her earlier. Uh, sorry, had her uh, as an admiral and unlocking all of those curiosities earlier. But so be it. She's just slightly behind in experience where she could have been. All right, and indeed, this was the Unfallen Homeworld. It has one planet, no vine ship, a ton of food because it's unfallen, but it's a little bit sad. Um, this is actually great because the theme of my who are the uh, who are the Vaulters video that we're going to do before this one is basically like blank but better. And, and you can see one of the things that we talk about when Unfallen were super unbalanced um, was that they grew, just had so much food that they grew like crazy and made their first system unbelievably good. Now, here you see that they're at seven people gaining a huge amount of food per turn. I haven't gotten any curiosities to give me population yet. I have the, the one on its way, but just through organic growth, I'm at five already on turn 11. Like, I've gained two people naturally. That's... Yeah. And, and meanwhile, his super vulnerable vine ship had to spend 20 turns to, to enrapture one neighboring node, and I killed it. Meanwhile, I already have a second functional colony for two, three turns already, which is earlier than any other race can get a second functional colony. And that second functional colony, by the way, has got 15 turns of 67, 55, so it's growing too. This is, like, if you gave me this picture and said turn 11, I said, I would say, oh my gosh, that's unbelievably strong. Alright, so here we've got three probes, so we're just going to throw them out that way. Off-world agribusiness in one turn. What do we want after agribusiness? We pro well, we have hot and cold planets over in our capital, so landscaping is not a bad idea. Uh, I think that the one that I'm more excited about, though, is that we've got this arid place over here with the arids and savannas. So that's Garden of Eden versus microfactories. Yeah, I think that the micro factories are going to be slightly better. Uh, and we want to get to the savanna afterwards. Okay. 
Yeah. So we're going to go with PEV scales next. And whoo, look at this, we finished our public private, so our science has gone crazy. All right. Uh, and that's not a super high, but it's a, a decent Hyperium deposit, right? We got a three Hyperium deposit over here. Beautiful. Okay, guys. Um, let's keep going. So, got our agribusiness. We're doing accelerators because of our golden ages. We have a crazy amount of influence, which means we can triple buff these guys. That'll get us to 60. Um, oh, they're already good friends of the uh, the unfallen. That means that we should probably go ahead and invest an extra one so that we get there as quickly as possible. Oh, and we have a pirate fleet over here now. Curses. That makes things slightly more challenging for, uh, for team good guys. But we'll still explore a little bit, see what we can do. We might get attacked, actually, for flying through here. So let's go that way. All right, our Gosi is ready. As you can see, the next Golden Age duration, it's reduced all the way down to four. Um, and right now, it costs an awful lot, 1,500 on this turn to colonize, and 19 um, Hyperium. So we won't be able to colonize this turn, but that's okay. Ooh, they are attacking us right away. It didn't even let us run through. All right, well, we're going to retreat, obviously. Now we're going to be sent home? Yeah, we're sen being sent home. We'll have to wait until the, the Tikanens are our friends. All right, so now we're getting drone networks here. Yeah, that's okay, I guess. Um, five on sterile. We don't have a sterile for you yet. Got to make sure that we stay ecstatic here as much as we can. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so one of the nice things about these guys is that they do a very good job with the Endless Research Park. A very good job. Um, so we're going to be using that more in the future, for sure. So let's look at our anomalies. So deserted cities and moons. OK. Wouldn't be bad for us to get some of these guys. This plus five on sterile, the Epistus guys, it is a really nice ability. Um, but we're not ready for it yet. For, for doing that stuff yet. So we're just going to go ahead and end and, and our turn here. And we're going to think about doing a wonder pretty soon, actually. So uh, as we talked about, oh, I'm an idiot. No, I'm not a super idiot, but I'm a medium idiot, you guys, because we definitely want definitely want Astra Finance right here. Because we already have so many... Oh, hello. Oh, it shut down. Because we went to zero influence. Um, we definitely want the ability to... Um, ba -da -ba -dum. Sorry, lost my train of thought briefly. We want the ability to uh, get our second upgrade. We already have 74 Jade Onyx, which is what we're going to do first, although I will talk a little bit about Titanium. Um, and that means that yeah, we want to upgrade to level 2 as soon as we... Ab absolutely as soon as we can. Um, so we have 10 turns of Golden Age here. 
Meanwhile, these guys are just making drone networks and may make endless research park. So I think we should make endless research park actually. Let's talk about that in a, in a second as well. So what I'm thinking here is that, let's see, how fast do we want you to grow? This ice is going to be tough to inhabit. Um, but from an XP perspective, it wouldn't be bad to drop Petrov in here. Giving 20 extra food. Mm. Now she's really best off in her current home. We'll leave her here. Okay. Great mysteries of the universe resolved. There's a level up for her. We're gonna do... Do we need the extra food? We always need extra food in the early game. Much better than half of a Hyperium per turn. So now this cost is going down, 15 and 1,000. We may be able to afford 15 and 1,000 if we spend our titanium. Let's think about doing that. So one turn until growth here. We're now at 95 food a turn, thanks to Petrov. Okay. The next golden age duration is only seven right now. I'm trying to think of w about whether we sell our titanium for this or not. Well, we'll definitely be open to selling our. Uh, hmm. 15 per, so 450, so no, we can't afford it no matter what, unless we sell our, all of our Jade Onyx. But the prices just aren't high enough in the galaxy right now. So, can't do it. Alright. So they're a little bit happier with us now. We're, we're now supposed to go grab Atmospheric Curiosities, which I definitely want to do. Will not be repairing. I'm just going to try to slide in here again. And now we should actually talk about some other stuff. Because... What do we got here? Questioner. Did he come and leave? He came and left already. Without trying to fight our pal, the Argosi. Um, okay. So let's talk a little bit about fleets because we have a really good fleet. Like, our our ships are just fantastic, and uh, we should use them. So, what I'm going to do here is to say... Um, Alright, so here's our fairing. We want to make a new one. Let's call it a long ship, because there's, I think, supposed to be a Viking theme with uh, with the vaulters. And give them, we found some upgraded torpedoes. So let's give them a couple of torpedoes. A couple of missiles. And because we have two of these slots... Yeah, let's make them super fast. So... Not bad. Name of the ship design is already used. They came up with a name for me. Fine. Uh, so if I can't do long ship, I'll call it... Phew. 
Do those Viking hats with horns have a name? I don't know. Let's just call it the Battle. No, the the Battle Scout. There we go. Because we're really, really original over here. I thought the Longship would be such a good name, too. Usually I have... Uh, kind of themed names that we came up with for all of all of the ships that we use like the Lumeris with the chameleons and the black tip sharks and all of this stuff but I just haven't played these guys enough to, to come up with names anyway so these battle scouts we can now make them in two turns they're 156 strength and so we're going to want to make four of them and then we should be able to pound through the missiles of almost any other ship that we've got, or the ship that faces us. Meanwhile, we have access to the lower fleet costs rule, um, which gives a reduction on construction costs for ships. So, if we build them in both places at once, which I think I will, here, then starting next turn, we can, uh, I guess even starting this turn. Let's see how much this has left. It's on the edge. So I'm gonna do one more turn of Dirty Hands, and then I'll switch over to the ship boost. And we'll use it in both ships at the same time. Okay. Great, so back to the technology screen here. Now we're gonna go for some uh, some military stuff, specifically jumping up to tanks, which are really important there. Oh, actually, hold on. Priorities, priorities. So one of the other changes that they've made, which I think is a really interesting one, is that a lot of the core attack and defense modules, you don't have to research specific technologies for them anymore. You just upgrade to them when you move up a tier in the military tree, which makes getting something like ubiquitous surveillance actually much more valuable than it used to be. Mm, pardon me. Because uh, it'll boost our uh, our defense, because it'll give us extra, like, the, especially these really nice plate hulls, which are um, a Vulture-specific upgrade. So, we're going to do that, and that actually means... Alright, so there's another thing that has to be done this turn, which is an exciting thing for us to do, which is our upgrade. So, I've been pushing it back a little bit. One of the big things that we can do here, as the vaulters that no other race can do, is use strategics as... Um, system upgrades and boy are they good so this has been patched a few times but in the current iteration the the key what we call level one resources give you plus 60 base on a system or 15 happiness if you're over here but but these guys are only okay the the core fids which are the best ones uh, give you plus 60 food dust industry or science and just before the strength of these things is primarily like in jadonix is by far the strongest um blue cap mold is by far the second best and then food and dust depends on who you're playing lumeris dust is better most other people food is better um now so instead of that plus 60 if you use titanium you get 40 industry and 40 food unbelievably strong if you do Hyperium, 40 Science, 40 Dust. Still pretty good, right? But the fact that they combined food and industry to just make you a, a juggernaut for one turn upgrade is crazy. The problem though is that it's very expensive to upgrade. It takes 31 Titanium to do this upgrade, um, which is actually more than the comparable luxury resource, 25 for the Jade Onyx. So my take on this is that um, number one, it makes the vultures incredibly consistent with their moderniz modernization. Because even if you don't start near Jadonix, the fact that you will always have access to some titanium and you have so many abilities to boost your titanium production to give you an industry-based um, system upgrade, unbelievably strong, right? Like, games are won and lost 
by having Jadonix nearby, and Vaulters get the equivalent of Jadonix slightly better with Titanium in every game. So, unbelievably strong. When our cup runneth over, like in this game, we're going to want to um, do Jadonix first, because we'll be able to upgrade all of our places immediately, and then in our second upgrade, then maybe we'll do Jadonix and Titanium together. So, that's what I'm going to do here. And right away, without missing a beat, we're going to go here, and we're going to go here to upgrade our systems. The titanium now, remember, is not very valuable because we, uh, we don't need it that much of it. So what we should be doing with our titanium is selling it to uh, allow us to colonize another system this turn. And we can also sell all but 25 of our Jadonics. So let's do that. So let's start with our strategics. We'll sell our blue cap mold. We'll sell all but 25 of our Jadonics. And then on our strategics, we'll need about 400. Oh, I may have sold one too many. A few too many, because I need 11. All right, so I need three more of that. And what's the gold cost? 917. Okay. So, I need to buy three of that. And then I can sell some of this. And now, we are free to create our little paradise in Jovanus over here. Tada! And we'll start immediately with our modernization. So, yeah, if you guys haven't caught on to that yet, this is pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty damn good. A nine turn golden age, we're off to the races, growing really fast even though we're on an arid planet. Three full colonies by turn 17. Yikes. Yep, meanwhile these guys... Um, yeah, militarists... Oh, this is way down. 17.5% more infantry troops. That used to be 100% more. Uh, back when I was playing before. So they've really nerfed the Tikkanen what, you guys? You're our friends. We're, we're pals. You're cordial to me. Don't attack me just for passing through. That's new. Sometimes they do that, sometimes they don't. Maybe the very, very militaristic ones will always attack you. Alright, well, I guess I have to go in force. Alright. Now, just to optimize here, we're going to be changing our law anyway, so I'm going to pull away Dirty Hands Act. We don't need it for this because it takes one turn no matter what. Boobity boom. Commercial frameworks just takes a long time, eight turns. Um, so now we've got our ubiquitous, uh, what is this, ubiquitous surveillance which unlocks these things, so when we go back to our ships, we should just, you know, keep upgrading them. We'll change to the better hulls there, apply that design, and now for these battle scouts, doop, doop. For the ones that aren't worked on yet, we'll make them slightly better. We can make two this turn. Not, not too bad. Meanwhile, we'll make Make them in three turns over here. Pretty great, I have to say. And then we'll move into that stuff. And then for you... Yeah, I think that's starting out just with some cerebral and drone networks. It's going to be just fine. Um, we also 
can fulfill our objective by building these two things. So we might do that. Even though we don't get a huge bonus. Although there is a temperate there. So we're going to want to expand to the savannah sooner rather than later. But getting commercial frameworks to start our trade colony, our trade post, is more important. Because you always want to start your trade companies as soon as humanly possible. So... Alright. Even though we're a little trapped in here, we feel really strong because we're a tall civilization. Which is kind of cool and different for endless space. So yeah, that's all the stuff we unlocked this turn. Alright, from a law perspective, I think we'll just go ahead and throw on the fleet costs rule for a second just to, to save as many hammers as we can. Oh, we didn't help at all. Oh, everybody helped except us. Bummer. Alright. <laughs> the systems are in the middle of the galaxy. So far away from us. We're not exploring too much. Okay. So... What's this guy doing? 37. Alright, Joker. I don't put up with that sort of thing. Now, um, as long as we're talking about battle stuff, let's grab... Oh, yeah. This is new in the patch that just dropped, where they ch show the battle cards. Alright, we're going to take the other long-range one, because we're building missiles. So, da -da -da, missile ships. Argosi in two turns will be ready to go. And meanwhile, our friends, the Tikanens. No, we're not. No. Oh. Are we allowed to do that? That's weird. I didn't think we could do that if we weren't the top guys. Interesting. The Their top uh, patrons or whatever. And then we're just, you know, throwing stuff out here to see what we find. Okay. Next turn. Oh, we should have changed our law back. So, lower feet costs finished. Dirty hands back in the game. Now. This is where things get interesting, because we can finish Endless Research Parks in 11 turns. 11 turns for Research Parks. <sighs> oh, welcome to the wonderful world of the Vaulters. Alright, so now these guys are blocked here. They have 10 movement. So, we are long range guys, so we'll just do this one. I imagine. Anger of the unfallen is like fire. The anger of the unfallen is like fire. Do not oh, interesting. Yeah, well, we can't go invade the unfallen right now. Their defenses are just way too good always. Also, by the way, worth mentioning that wonders are also not system improvements. They're a different category called wonder, so we don't get the uh, the industry approval from uh, the industry improvement from uh, the science law on them. We just get it from all the other brilliant things that are going on here. And the vaulters like. Um, sorry, the vaulters like um, blue cap mold, which is interesting because that means that we can boost them and get some extra science with blue cap mold, which is kind of cool. Wait, I have a guardian? Where do I have a guardian? Did they throw a guardian down here? Oh my gosh, they did. 
So is he a good guardian? Right now he is. But <laughs> that can turn to minus 20 influence really quick. Um, huh. Alright. Thanks, I guess. Alright, and so you're just gonna hang out there for a second. And we'll go to the next turn. So here, scientists are clearly going to win, so we want to take this opportunity to support the industrialists. Because the industrialist Volter law... Ah, uh, no, we're going militarist all of a sudden. Alright, alright. We'll get Star Bill Boogie, which is, you know, okay. Not great at two influence per turn. Okay, so now we've got our battle scouts, which can't quite get there, but almost. I know what you're thinking. Sure, we'll do it. It's always worth saving a turn if we can do something like Starbill Boogie for one turn. Boom. How's that? Now he's got 267. Oh, now you're okay with me staying here. Is that what's happening? Well, fine. If you're okay with me staying here now, then maybe I can finally get my damn scout ship over there to do something. So the Argosi is also ready again. So we send it forward. Remember that this is actually a pretty good spot with the atoll plus the steps and a snow with more jade onyx. So we're going to want to exploit that with our next one. Um, okay. Oh, that this did jump to two with both of them because we no longer have our sweet law. But that's all right. Wow. Ooh, did I not allow my manpower to fill up fully? Interesting. Yeah, my manpower is super weak on all of these guys. Curious. Very curious. So I've got six here, so I'm going to... Boom, Hyperium, Blue Cat Mold, Transvine, Extra Vision Range, not too shabby. And we'll go ahead and throw one that way. Meanwhile, we can take the Argosi and see if there's a spot out here we actually want to go visit. Not really. But because our manpower is so low, we can't really uh, attack that place effectively. So we'll go back to Dirty Hands to keep generating this stuff. And after Commercial Frameworks, we need our, I guess, two things. We need our Savannah and Autonomous Construction. We're going to do it in the opposite order, though. Hold on, let's think. <sighs> tact, right? And this is the theme of this game. Tact, tact, tact. So, by the principles of tact, we have to ask the questions, will we build our trade headquarters, that's unlocked by commercial frameworks, before finishing the Endless Research Park? If yes, 
then it's worth finishing commercial frameworks first. If no, we should get the Savannah first. I think that trade uh, trade places are more important than finishing the Endless Research Park, so I'm happy to be making progress on the park right now for the next couple of turns, but I actually will be happy um, switching over to the, the trade headquarters in two turns. So I'm going to keep it like this. Ooh, we've got our 10th Vaulter. And we've got a Battle. So a Prowler that's got medium range and then a kind of balanced attacker here. So we want to do, let's see, they're both lasery, at least partially lasery. So let's see how our guys fare. Pretty well. Pretty well indeed. I just don't have any men in there. Hmm. Alright, so what's here? Another tiny, tiny tundra with a green Okay. Huh. The Horatio have taken over. Wow, that's a hell of a system. Well, I think I found the friends that I want to beat up on, guys. Good. Alright, so I don't have the manpower to do anything here, right? We decided that before. So instead of trying to fight these pirates, which will not be a successful endeavor, what I should do instead is come over here, go to Hamal. While orbiting Hamal, I will be able to regenerate my manpower, use the Golden Age from Hamal, which, by the way, I still can't, like, it's still going to be a little while before I can do this, not, but not so long, right? Because it always, uh, this cost always scaled down over 10 turns, that in the early game, when it's pretty fast uh, scaling down, or sorry, pretty, it's not very expensive, so the scaling down is slower. Later in the game, because it, you know, scales down 10% per turn, um, it gets affordable pretty quickly. So here. Yeah, I think that we're fine being a little bit more happy-go-lucky with our friends, the Unfallen. Our erstwhile friends, the Unfallen. Um, I guess we'll just do Xenotourism. Don't have too much better to do there. Here we could also do Xenotourism. We're so happy right now. Unfortunately, that's an Arctic and these are ices, which is always a bummer. Okay. Yeah, and we are going I'm going to bump that up so that we get to 100 with them and can uh directly assimilate if needed. Call a spaceman a spaceman. Yeah, we're definitely not taking the... Um, we don't need religion. We don't need approval. And we definitely don't want to take the industry hit. We just want to make sure that our guys stay happy so we can move them over there and over there. Ah, you can't be ecstatic no matter what. Come on now. Oh, four turns for a trade company. Unbelievably good. Uh, well, they're going to be boosted up as soon as we, uh, as soon as we settle. So let's just make the settling happen. I think all we need is dust, right? We need about twelve hundred. Do we have twelve hundred? How much titanium do we need for this? Was it nineteen? Yep, nineteen. So. Let's go ahead and sell a little bit of that. Oh. Sell one of those. And then for our Luxes, we're not even going to come close, regrettably. Nope. Even if we sell all of our Jade. Ah, all right. It'll only be one or two more turns. Not too bad. Your 
level 4, so that means that you're going to get... Yeah, this resource scrounger, I'm like, really not thrilled with it, because it's just like one... Yeah, as a, as a hero point, it's just not very well scaling. I'm probably even more excited about something like the operations expert. <coughs> Pardon me, guys. Alright, so we're just going to take that for the small gain. I don't need the 0.5. Um, ah, shit, why did I do that? Because well, I'm a genius course. Alright, so this one, it's a similarly sized battle actually. I will probably lose one of my ships here. Um, Alright, so we're going to go with the shields again. And we will fight them. Did I indeed? Yeah. Lost one ship. And that could have been avoided. We're going to go there and stop, because... Hmm. Doubting my ethics? How rude. That is just rude, you guys. Alright. So, let's, um... Let's make ourselves a couple more of these guys. Trade company does count as a system improvement, for those of you keeping score over there. And then we're going to build two more of these, and, uh, and then we're going to jump into the trade subsidiary. Meanwhile, we're trying to get every last little thing. So 45 takes us to 27, yeah. And how much do we need here? This is 17 now, and we're almost there. 1570? Okay. We might make it. Because we can sell... Uh, maybe not. Oh, 1600! Is that going to be enough? Oh, it's rounding up. We're probably like too short or something like that. Well, okay, that's fine. Oh, oh, let's see. Let's see if it's really like that little. Oh my god. Guys, we are perfect. Perfect. Just take a moment. <sighs> Inhale. Exhale. We have completely sold every one of our resources except exactly the resources we need to settle and improve this turn exactly enough dust, exactly enough resource. Ah, oh, just warms my tiny evil heart. <laughs> All right. So we're now on this tundra. We're going to jump right away to the modernization. Um Yeah, this is sweet. <laughs> Absolutely sweet. And is this that's my ship there? Um, okay, so next turn we will uh, jump back over here to start regenerating ourselves, or improving our manpower. That is. And in the meantime, we'll complete our quest next turn. Okay, we got our quest, destroy the pirate layer on Balton, or reach a non-aggression with the pirates for 12 turns. Interesting. Ooh, and then we get this drive, which I really like, actually. Um, Alright, we'll make that decision in a second. Pirate marked on... Wait, wait, Hamal? Oh, there's a mark on it, so they're going to come attack it. Got it. 
Yep, discovering of our red sang, more vulture population. Cool, cool. Note that the unfallen have not gotten there yet. Um, Alright, and so the quest is to destroy the Botan pirate layer. Alright, the non-aggression pact is 600 influence. So the question is, do we want to just destroy the pirate layer? Or do we want to spend 600 influence? I think that 600 influence is way too valuable. We're going to go with the military approach. The Hellraiser torpedoes, meh, not super excited about them. They're whatever. Wow. Ooh, we discovered the location of Vale. Ha <laughs> ha! That was so many curiosities. Nice. Destructive Salvager. Ooh, I radiated my favorite. More Onyx. Right. We even have one more. Alright, Horatio. You got it. Enjoy your new dense atmosphere. I'll be enjoying it too soon. Okay, so now this place is ours. Um, hooray. So that means our infantry troops get better. We inherit it with some buildings already attached, including public privates, magnetic, sustainable farms. Hooray, hooray, hooray. This guy's got both a cold and an arctic, uh, which is pretty cool. And we've got these Tikanin populations which, you know, aren't fantastic. They get extra manpower, which is kind of a whoop de doo statistic. Um, nothing special here in terms of luxuries, so we're just going to do the basics, and then as soon as we get enough Jade Onyx back, then we will uh, upgrade them. How much Jade Onyx do we have in return? Oh, we already have 19. All right, so the price should be shit, right? Yeah, because we've been flooding the market. So, getting six is easy peasy. How is our dust so low? Got too many system improvements that you don't need, I guess. Curious. Curious. Alright, so we need more dust. I haven't had this problem in a long time. Probably because our military is uh, somewhat expansive. Not huge, of course, but somewhat. Huh. <laughs> well, let's give ourselves a little bit of a market cushion here. Because we don't need that but we just want to be above positive. So I'm not too scared of the, that minus 27 dust to turn. That does not frighten me at all. Oh, I guess part of it is also the fact that we've got all these new cells, which are also costing us cash every turn. Um, are they full of troops? Hey, they are. 71 of them, in fact. All right, still not enough to take out the pirate layer, but enough to... Pr how strong are they? 267 for the fleet. Also not strong enough to matter there. So, what then they should do is make their way to those guys. Because they can be strong enough over there. Meanwhile, on our little Tundra friend, we are going to start with... Oh, man. 114 industry. Like... I have five completed colonies. And going tall my ass, right? Some of you are thinking. Because this is, it feels a little bit like going wide, just because it's so much. So much, so good, so fast. 
but yeah. But at the same time, like my capital, because I haven't had to do any outposts, instead of being at four to five people, like it would be in a normal game at turn 20, instead I'm at 12. And my second place is already at five, um, which is why my numbers here can be so crazy. 311 science, for example, without development grants. All right, so we've got our autonomous construction. Uh, da -da -da -da. Next things on our list include expansion to the sterile planets, so like our arctics here and ices here. Research cities, of course, are good. Um, additional laws, which I like the idea of, so I think that's where we're going to go next, actually, is to the laws and heroes. And then we'll think about where we go from there. Oh, interesting. Okay. Good job, guys, discovering the academy. All right, now our happiness is a little bit low. So that means that in most of these places where our happiness is just okay, not great, we should go ahead and build our little supermarkets. They're, they're solid early game approval buildings. And they do boost, for example, dust, which we want by a lot. Okay, I see. So these scouts, one of their limitations is that they just have no room for manpower. That's what's happening here. So like, da 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 da. That's when we have our stats off. So, where are we? Yeah, they only have room for 40 manpower in each of these ships. So, we need to create... I always, as an old Halo player, I can't help but think of the pelicans from Halo. That's a super fast. No, we don't even need that. Let's just make a big old dropship with a missile on it. No, it should have. No, no, it should have bullets. Perfect. Create one of those. And get it over here. And uh, yeah, that'll be a nice little troop drop, which we'll use for our invasion. Although we won't be able to do it before 30 turns. Ah, so be it. We'll be we'll have a finished trade company. We won't finish that. Alright, so Academy Crower has increased. Fully intend to make the galaxy more beautiful. Oh, don't worry, pal, I don't like you either. Da -da -da. Oh, so we've got a big pirate fleet over here, 500 strength. Those pirates can get pretty nasty, that's true. How much is ours? 400? And I think weaker defenses. Yeah. Indeed it is. Alright, so we're gonna go throw some probes out. Disband this guy over here. And then, no. so we're disbanding both of our fleets so that they can just regen in here. They don't get caught by those pirates that are a little too strong for them. We can let our cells catch up. The pirates on Endless, the Endless difficulty pirates, they're like not pushovers. Not great, but definitely not pushovers. Meanwhile, we're going to finish the Endless Research Park over here. On this side, we're going to build our trade company subsidiary. It's fine that we do it um, after 
this supermarket, I think. Ah, no, we'll we'll do it first. One one turn's always better than not one turn. So, yeah, we want to be act active there as soon as possible. And uh, oh, we pr had this, and I forgot to do it. Snap! I'll bet some of you guys five turns ago or four turns ago were yelling at the screen at me that I even bought the Jadonix for this and then I didn't do it. Well, I deserve all of the yelling. <sighs> okay. Two more turns and then we'll do our little wrap up. So, do we want to do Xenobiology? Botanical scanning is good but we have access to the Academy now since it's been discovered. Um, so taking a different approach and getting efficient shielding will probably be more in our interests. For the Argosi, yeah, we'll see. Mediterranean arid desert, decent. This is really the Jadonix corner of the galaxy, huh? Oh, these guys showed up fast. They're quick. So, you know what? If we... Hmm. Yep. What we should be doing here is because... So, we talked about the number of support slots in our civilian ships. The fact that they have that crazy f number, four, means that we can do some, uh, some excellent sieging as well. Um... But the main reason I want to get this right now is that I want to like to upgrade our next missiles, these decay torpedoes, and the beams here, so that I can upgrade my ships and then come out and uh, fight those guys. Battle tactics modification, sure. Three more turns. All right. So now they're going to be gathering vital, vital statistics. Ooh. And we can either produce 73 per turn to get Strat Recycler. Interesting. Or the Dust Space Scoop. Both of these are actually just terribly balanced. Like, look at these things. So this one costs 500 dust to put on a ship. And for every destroyed command point, it gives you one or one titanium, one hyperium. That's actually... Okay, sorry. This one is, is actually okay. Definitely not bad. Um, I think that the effect of it is iffy. Maybe okay, maybe not. The cost is really high, and you have to protect that ship like crazy. Um, to get the benefits out of it. But okay, that's cool. But this one, it costs three adamantine and it gives you five dust per turn? Like, w why would you do that? Then you ha you've you spent 12 adamantine to have a ship kind of just like hanging around that makes 20 dust a turn? Or not five, uh, uh, tw 12 adamantine for like four modules on the civilian ship and it makes 20 dust a, per a turn costs six in upkeep and so you're making a net of 14 a turn meanwhile you could have sold that 12 adamantine and use your industry for so much else that one is crazy to me so we're definitely going to take the dust one which is good because we're going to be wanting to boost our dust production anyway uh, and then for this one Right now we have 281 industry in our uh, home planet. And so asking us to go much higher than that is really a tough sell because it's already pretty damn high. Um, but I do like the idea of getting industrialists. 
So this one's super easy, the pacifist one. Super easy. Because that's just like, I don't know, I could sell some stuff and get it this turn. Yeah, sure. We'll just go ahead and do the easy thing. 1100, that's like almost as much as I have right now. That's 100 dust more. Okay. Hooray! We did it, you guys! Are there two pirate fleets there? My goodness! I'm being smushed by the pirates! Alright, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to do something about this. This is gonna be fun. Alright, when we get the focus plasma next turn, we're gonna kick that into action. Cool. Merge those guys together. Send them this way. And then we'll group five here and then try to get them out and, and join them up with our other fleet. Okay, but that's our 30 turns. So so let's just kind of briefly review. Um, do our little check-in. So starting at the top level, we've got score-wise, um, not in first, but close to. Uh, the red team is one better, but that's about to change because I will be finishing a wonder in three turns, which will be jumping up my approval rating, getting everybody to Devoted, bumping my dust and uh, science production higher up than it already is. Um, I've got four really nice systems, one through an assimilation, three through the Argosi, and then a fifth one just now through the Argosi. These systems all have excellent industry production, in part because of the Jade Onyx, but if it was titanium, we would have been able to do it almost as easily. Almost, not quite, but almost as easily. Uh, it would have been just a bit slower. Um, we didn't have a ton of good planets around us, so like this boreal jungle to start with was nice, but you know, not crazy. This is on par or slightly below what I've seen on average for the Vaulter's starting situations. And then like just having the tiny Terrans with the ices over here, um, the nice arid savannas, and then this one that became uh, our atoll that became a pirate uh, pirate palace pretty early. All, you know, not amazing stuff. Uh, we're kind of cornered in here, but despite all of that, I feel just super, super, super strong. Um, these pirates that are stacking up on us here, sure, they're going to take us down a little bit, but we actually have a pretty substantial fleet, right? This is um, eight battleships that we have by turn 30 who are ready to fight these pirates, and even though they're, you know, big and scary, we're not going to lose to them. We may lose a couple ships, but, but we won't lose the war. Um, so yeah, I think Hopefully you guys have learned something about how I'm thinking about playing the Vaulters. Um, I think that going forward from here, um, we didn't get to do it in this video uh, because it, it takes, a, like, we really focused on our economy and kind of getting this rolling and the wonders and so on. But now that we've got the economy there, the next step is really because of the Horatio being here who are inherently weak and also these excellent systems here, we're going to start attacking the Horatio. And my objective will be to take out one civilization, right? Completely take out the Horatio, and then pause. Because of this. So this n maximum number of, of systems that we, can, uh, that we can establish, we don't really want to go above that eight, uh, because then our, our approval will start to drop dramatically. And especially with the endless research parks that we're building, um, we want to keep the empire at devoted as much as possible. So, so we're gonna do some conquering of the Horatio and then pause, not be too greedy, and consolidate, build up an unstoppable economy, and then choose our win condition. Which, given the setup that we have now, with as much titanium and jade onyx as we have, 
um, will probably be the wonder victory, is what I would go for in this stage. And, and I think is actually going to be a common Vaulter's victory, is to do the wonder. Uh, anyway, so that's all for this video. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this expert guide to the new Endless Space Race, the Vaulters. Um, yeah, hope you've been enjoying the content. It's fun to be back doing this. Um, if you've noticed more mistakes that I made than the ones that I called out during the video, please go ahead and like throw them in the comments. It helps helps people sometimes to understand uh, why I'm doing something. I know I made a few mistakes in, in this game today, so I appreciate your guys' patience with that, as I'm always trying to get better, too. Um, yeah. Take it easy, guys, and see you next time.